If it wasn't the support from my spouse and my family, I would never have become a physician entrepreneur. Heck, if it wasn't for the support of my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, I wouldn't even apply to medical school and become a physician. And that's why I feel it's really important that before you make any decision in your career or perhaps a big investment, you really need the input from your life partner. It could be a real estate investment. It could be starting up a side gig, starting a non-clinical job. I've seen too many circumstances, especially with students who want to start a little side gig, but they don't want to involve their partner. And I think you're really asking for trouble. So that's why I'm excited to bring on my next guest. He's one of our relationship coaches at our Physician Coaches website. He has been working with physicians, him and his wife, since 2019, and him himself is a physician for over 30 years. He really dropped some truth bombs that I think can be uncomfortable, but it's important to really face it head on. My interview with Dr. George Jeep Nam on this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hey guys, Dr. Mike Wimeng. Welcome to another edition of Bootstrap MD. This is the podcast for physician entrepreneurs. We have a very interesting topic that we really don't talk a lot about, but it is just as vital as whether learning you know, the latest business strategy or how to get new clients. And that's about you know, having a strong relationship or strong relationships whenever you're going into some type of new venture. I probably wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't have, you know, a spouse who was able to support me and all the crazy <laughs> ventures that, that I, I was in so long ago. And so I thought it was important to actually have someone who was an expert at relationships and, and at fixing relationships. His name is Dr. George Jeep Nam. He goes by Dr. Jeep. He's been a physician for 31 years, a marriage coach for 27. Uh, so he's really been in the trenches when not a lot of coaches were out there who were physicians. He and his wife since 2019 have actually been specializing in physician marriage coaching. As a married doctor and coach himself, he's mixed his passion for coaching doctors and helping them find love and a deeper connection in their marriage and career life. He's been featured on many podcasts, a regular contributor to Physician Outlook Magazine, and he's the author of What's Forever for a Physician Guide for Everlasting Love and Success in Marriage. Uh, he's the founder. Uh, you can find him at Best Friends Again, bestfriendsagain.com. So without further ado, Dr. Jeep, welcome to the program. Dr. Mike, it's a pleasure to be with you. So I'm going to start off, and, and you know, if you've ever listened to my, my interviews, I, I kind of will throw people off a little bit, but I want to know, how did you get the name Jeep? <laughs> well, um, I usually tell two stories. The uh, one's a little off color, um, <laughs> and that that um, it's where I was conceived, but that's not <laughs> that's not the truth. Um, it comes from uh, George Philip GP, and um, my my aunt didn't like the initials GP, which is what uh, my dad mom decided to go with, and she just started calling me Jeep. And it stuck for all these years. I, I like the story, but yeah, I also think that the first story is a little bit more memorable too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Uh, you're a physician and you're also been a marriage coach for 27 years. So you were coaching, um, you were coaching people you know, outside of your, your practice, or perhaps I don't know if you, if you did that in, in place of your practice, how did you kind of get first get started in this? Well, I'll tell you, Dr. Mike, um, growing up, uh, I was surrounded uh, literally by dysfunctional marriage. Um, mm. Probably the most notable uh, dysfunctional marriage was uh, my mom and dad. And um, was a part of that lived with lived in that for years and there was um, a lot of dysfunctional marriage amongst their friends there was a lot of infidelity and um 
from an early age, I had an idea about marriage, how I wanted it to be, how I thought that it could be. And as I went through living through these relationships, I said, if there, there's just no reason why this has to be um, happening the way it is. And so uh, when I got done uh, with my education in medicine, finished my residency, um, I, I'm like, I, I need to become part of this. Uh, my wife and I got married at the end of uh, my residency. I was a third year in family practice. And, um, but we were together um, a lot, well, several years before that. So I got to see what uh, marriages were like with physicians, not only from my, my father, but from residents who were married. And, and I got to see the things that happened, the problems that occurred without really any good tools as far as um, what to do about that. So it uh, initially started out um, coaching married couples, mostly and engaged couples, mostly on weekends um, at retreats several times a year. Um, I also did, you know, I, I think you would agree as physicians, you know, we're coaches. I mean, it's what we do. It's what we do with our patients. We coach them as far as what we, we would like for them to do with specific disciplines and diseases and problems. Now, it's always a, a, a bit of a, uh, a, what would I say, a bit of a struggle to get them to follow what we want them to do sometimes, but, but we are coaches. So I, I did a little bit of that in conjunction in the office with patients and got a lot of good feedback um, and continued to do the weekend. But um, as uh, I would say, as um, medicine has changed, and not for the better in a lot of ways, I started thinking, I need to start doing this on a more full-time basis. And I need to start doing this with our colleagues, who I know suffer um, with work-life marriage balance, and show them that myself, being part of a physician marriage for almost 29 years now, and having gone through some tumultuous times and being able to get through that and not only survive, but to thrive, I wanted to uh, show our colleagues that this is something that doesn't need to continue to occur. And there are ways to, uh, to get through it and to be better as a result of that. What are some some things that, uh, since you both coached, you know, physicians and, and mostly non physicians in in your uh, marriage coach career, um, what are some things that you may notice different with physicians that maybe you don't see in non physicians, or maybe you see the same thing? Well, uh, physicians, and it's a, it's an excellent question. I, I mean, we um, as physicians, we have issues that oftentimes we deal with on a a daily basis that the average marriage couple just doesn't have to deal with. Um, uh, we are communicating with our patients. We're communicating with our staff. We're communicating with hospital administration. We're communicating with insurance companies. And when we come home from the day, oftentimes we are communicated out. <laughs> and what we want to do when we get home is detach. Well, I'll tell you a, a quick story about my wife and I. Um, you know, I often would, would work 12-hour uh, days in family practice. I'd get home at 7 o'clock, and all I wanted to do was to sit in front of the TV and just stare at something else that's not a computer or it's not a problem just to um, – uh, just to kind of like vegetate and detach. Well, you know, my wife uh, was also working at the office at the time as the, as the uh, office manager and we had kids. And so she would uh, work at the office, but then she would go pick up the kids. She would come home. She would start dinner. She would do all of these things. 
Um, and by the time I got home, she was expecting help. And I mean, I love my kids, I love my wife, but I'm like, I need an hour or two to just um, to myself to kind of offload. Well, she got a little sick of that. And really, I, I don't blame her that she did because she was putting in the time that I was putting in, but then more time on top of that. So um, this and having talking to uh, other physicians, this is something that we deal with on a regular basis. We have to have time to detach, but we can't do that at the expense of our families. Yet we do this, you know, quite a bit. And she just had the courage to say to me, Hey, you know, I need your help. I'm doing all this. And, you know, we talked about this when we were going to have kids and enlarge our family that we were both going to be uh, equally involved in this. And I wasn't holding up my part of the bargain. So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to go to work, see 20, 30, 35 people a day, deal with um, well, back at that time, it was charting. Well, now it's EMR. Um, and then dealing with staff issues, dealing with uh, insurance companies and all of that, and try to do a good job of that and try to be the best that I can be. And yet come home and here's my wife giving me a hard time about all this. How am I going to do both of these things at once? And um, it I mean, it was a struggle. And, and again, I know that our brethren deal with this, male and female, um, or both, juggling kids. And um, so through communication, and I know that's a trite word, uh, through communication and making time, um, the we were able to get through that. And what I told my wife is, okay, um, I'll cut down an hour. I'll watch TV. You let me sit there and not say anything except say hi to the kids. And then when that's done, you uh, come and I will listen to what's gone on with your day. And then we'll kind of go from there. So that's just one example of what a lot of us deal with, that with a little bit of talk, a little bit of self-reflection, a little bit of self-assessment that you know, we've been able to do that. Um, but there's just too, too many of us. We just want to get home, eat, you know, go watch TV, maybe say a little bit to the wife and the kids and then go to bed and get up and do it all over again. It's just, but that is just a, it's dysfunctional behavior that goes on for um, a long time. And pretty soon you're, you're looking at, you're, you're not, um, you're not a couple, you're roommates, communication's getting worse and worse and worse. And before you know it, you're saying to yourself, what happened? What happened? You both withdraw and um, you're thinking about getting separated and even worse than that, of course. So, but that's what we teach as coaches, how to get through those types of behaviors. And a lot of trust is involved with um, spouses with, you know, with we talks. Oftentimes, we don't get home um, immediately after work. We got to go other places. We got to go to the hospital. Uh, we got to go to board meetings, whatever. So the, you know, our our spouses are trusting that we're behaving. But when you get um, so overburdened, overwhelmed. Sometimes it may be a little easy to reach over, reach out to someone who is a different shoulder to lean on, somebody who's got maybe a little more understanding about what it's like to go through these days, and especially now in the days of COVID and so many more um, extra issues that we have to deal with. And first thing you know, you're talking and then the next thing you're having a drink and the next thing, you know, um, the talking becomes more intimate and then you've got into a realm that you don't want to go into. And I ran into that growing up specifically with my parents' marriage. And, um, and that's kind of the kind of thing my mother went on for years 
thinking that, you know, my father was in the hospital all these nights and it was a lot more than just going and making rounds. So sometimes that trust has been um, not destroyed, but really hurt. And um, it's difficult to get back from that when that happens. How do you stop that from happening? Well, that's regular communication throughout the day, even if it's just a little text. Um, okay, where are you at this time? Um, and I've seen that happen. And that's it's not something that has occurred with Vanessa and I, but we have a lot of people that we have dealt with that have had that in. So working, that's another thing that, that, um, that we've helped work through with, um, with our colleagues. As a doctor, I wasn't used to asking for help, especially when it came to subjects outside of medicine. But then I found physiciancoaches.com. In an instant, I found hundreds of experts to help me in all aspects of life, on areas I was afraid to ask, dealing with burnout, starting a side gig, money management, even help with my marriage. And the best part? Nearly all experts are physicians themselves. After reading their profile and a quick chat, I knew I found the right mentor for me. At physiciancoaches.com, help from professional colleagues is just a click away. Yeah, I know even in my case with my wife, and we've been married, uh, you know, a lot, I should remember this since 93, so, you know, 28 years, almost as, as long as you have is we get so busy, you know, with things yeah. and I actually have to schedule, you know, uh, exactly. date night. and, and especially if you're, you have, you're coming home, but let's say you want to work on your, your, your business or you're, you're investing in things. Um, you know, it's so important, uh, you know, but not, I'm not perfect at that too. And, and there'll be times where, you know, we have issues like that, where, um, you know, I still remember my wife saying, you know, for a few years ago, I feel more like a roommate, you know, than, than a marriage. What are some warning signs that we should be look out for if, where we, as a couple, we may need to, to uh, you know, seek help? Um, I, I think one of the first things that you will start to see is that um, communication starts to deteriorate. You come home, you want to talk. And oftentimes what has happened is that you've come home, you've had an issue, you've um, let frustration build up that you've had at the office or uh, a similar venue that you go to during the day, and you take it out on your spouse. Um, and not only do you take it out on your spouse, but you're not wanting to listen to what he or she has to say. And you're kind of getting your way all the time. You're not um, really listening deeply to what your spouse is telling you. And so there's really no middle ground between the two of you. So what happens as a result of that? Every time this happens in that way, um, there's this thought on the other side, well, what's the use for me to really um, talk when I'm not being taken seriously? So then you will hear the other spouse say, well, well um, why, why, you know, you get your way anyway. So what's the use for me to talk? So gradually those times of talking becomes less and less and less or another you promise that um, you're going to go meet for dinner. You promise that you're going to go meet for a movie. You promise that you're going to go do something with your kids. And something happens, you know, you, you've got a call. Um, uh, you can't go. It's an emergency, whatever. Um, you don't communicate that very well. Or you do, and then you don't show up. And then uh, when you show up, oftentimes it's late. And... Um, that happens a few times, then the spouse gets really upset, um, is sick of hearing your excuses that you repeat ad nauseum. And sometimes you may spice the excuse up a little bit, but basically it's the same thing. 
and um, soon those outings stop to happen or stop happening in uh, your spouse's why do I even schedule any of these things mm. when you say you're going to be there and you don't? And it's easy as, as, um, as physicians that we say, okay, well, I'm going to text or email my wife or my daughter or my uh, son, and I'm going to tell them that I have to do this. Well, all it takes is for you to get another call from something else, and then you get distracted, and then you forget that, oh, I have to, uh, I have to call, I have to tell them I'm going to be late or that I'm not going to make. And that happens frequently. And if you don't address that, as it becomes a problem, especially in its initial stages, again, then these things don't happen. That connection happens. Intimacy for sure is not going to happen. Um, and uh, the other types of communication, emotional communication um they, they just stop happening or become less and less and less and then you like you're saying well he or she's not doing it so why should i so then you start mutually blaming each other and then you're in one room watching this she's in her he or she's in another room watching that and then the roommate situation starts to occur yeah yeah I, I think also, too, as, as a physician, you know, oftentimes, of course, we're the decision maker. We're usually the buck stops here. Mm -hmm. And one of the few people who questions the decisions is your, is your spouse. Um, how much have you had to kind of intervene where as, as you as the coach, you're saying, hey, <laughs> you know, you're not right here in this situation. How much have you had to do that? <laughs> I, I've, um, I've had to do that um, uh, frequently. Um, now, we're in a little bit of a different situation. In that the first 10 years of our marriage, um, Vanessa was working at the office and she was the office man. Now, you often get with staff that works for you. Oh, no, here comes Dr. So-and-so's wife. Right. She just is in there. She really doesn't know anything, but he wants her in there for this reason or that reason. She, you know, uh, Mrs. So-and-so comes in with dress to the nines and, you know, just wanting to be seen and respected for really not literally doing anything. That wasn't the case with Vanessa. It, she was had a degree in um, uh, accounting management degree, um, and then uh, she took a a course, a uh, several week course about how to manage um, specifically a physician's office. So it's a time for um, her to be respected, but when she was. Um, you know, it, it wasn't that much of a problem. Now, she took care of the financial aspect of things. She dealt with personnel. Uh, and I dealt with medicine and patients. So there, there were times when we had to um, inter, intermingle with that. But most of all, we were able to uh, stay away. Now, sometimes she would get involved with the medical aspect for whatever reason, where I got too involved in talking about the financial situation or staff, which I really didn't have the right to do because I didn't have the knowledge that she had. And so I did have to say, listen, you know, I'm a doctor. This is what I do. This is what I've been trained for. And she would have to do the same thing to me when I would get involved with the financial aspect. I'm like, and she would get upset and I'd say, well, you, you're right. You're, you've been trained to do this. You have a management degree. You have an accounting degree. You know much more about this than, than I do. So I really shouldn't be saying that much. But, but I had, we both had to coach each other in, uh, in these instances. Uh, but there's always been, um, before we were married, we said that communication was going to be a priority now, as you've stated quite correctly with yourself, that sometimes you had to schedule it. And 
sometimes you do because you're you're so busy there's so many things happening that you have to make time for that but it is time well spent and it's time that has to occur for whatever problem or issue that you're dealing with and in this day and age with uh with uh with ourselves and our colleagues um situations may change um significantly on a daily basis not just every week or every month on a daily basis increased work responsibilities increased hours um uh more um uh administrative responsibility and with covid those th- or changes in staff and dealing with that those are things that um not like in the past where um it would change gradually these happen day by day by day often talks and that that just compounds everything so it makes it even more important that you schedule that time regardless remember when you could practice medicine on your own terms what if you could take control of your physician career make more money while working smarter not harder pick up your copy of the physician physician earn more work smart and love medicine again Now updated for 2021, the Positioned Physician details one doctor's journey from burnt-out employee to successful entrepreneur. Whether you are in residency, in mid-career, or close to retirement, after reading the Positioned Physician, you'll gain the knowledge that can strategically impact your doctor life. The Positioned Physician, now available on Amazon Kindle and paperback. Now, you mentioned that uh, your your wife, uh, you work with your wife you know yeah. uh currently and and you know sometimes what what i've seen is you know when physicians and non-physicians is you know and i've said this to my wife you know you don't know what i go through you know in, in a day right so, <laughs> and all the those things and now you have where we see physician and physician couples so they do know for the most part uh you know what what they go through again you know that that you you if you didn't watch the video when i said that you just like whoa you know when you when you said that so so my my uh what do you do now when um they do know what 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 it is and how best to can can you react to that you know where obviously that's the wrong thing to say because you're you're saying that your work is more important than someone who who is not but what 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 challenges and again the second question what challenges do you physician couples have that uh you know really you know b- besides just the time element to it that well, they really have to be aware of let me you get um do the answer the first part of that um when i was growing up um uh, my mother didn't work uh, my father was a physician he started back at at time when when you could do everything he was a family doc but you basically could do your own surgeries you do you could do a lot of that obviously that's long gone but so she would stay home but unfortunately he devalued what she did during the day which was uh taking care of the bills taking care of the kids um cooking doing all of that that you know he compared to what he did um he just didn't think that what she did was a you know was a big deal and i always thought that that was totally unfair he was not um he didn't know what she did uh, and even if he did know what she would did what he was doing like you said was was more important and harder and so as time went on i i would see that with um with different clients i i would see that with different physicians still see it today remarkably but i always had decided um before i got married my wife and i were together when we were courting that i knew that she was going to be working with me when we started because that's what the plan was but she would at least initially have most of the child care responsibilities and doing things around the house so i told her um especially when i would come home from a day uh that 
listen, I don't expect for you to make me a meal. I don't expect for you to do um, if my laundry. If you have the time to do that and you do it for me, I appreciate it very much. But what you do is at least as important as what I do. I'm, I'm a doctor. I do what I do. You're, you're my wife, your mother, you, you uh, are housekeeper, you are child rear, you are bill payer, you are all those. And there is no way that what you do is any less important than what I do. And that was a, you know, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, was something that I learned from my father growing up. And so um, I use that, I give that example that, um, no, what each of you do is equally as important to your relationship and devaluing that in any way is you're looking for huge amounts of trouble. Now, in regards to physicians who are married to each other, and, and I have seen that, um, especially when kids become involved, usually the, the female physician is the one who takes on the greater responsibility initially. So she's still doing more. Um, and most of the time she's, um, at least in my experience, has cut back. Um, when they were working full time, they decide, okay, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to take some maternity time off. Um, I'm going to be at home. And then even when they restart, maybe start out for um, a couple of days a week. And then when the, when the kids get into school, then come back and, and frequently the nap. So in my responsibility, and I've had to try to get the husband um, is I've tried to get him to understand, listen, Yes, you do what she does. She does what you do, but you don't have a baby. You don't have the capacity. At least I don't think so. Maybe I've missed something anymore, but you don't have the capacity to have a child. You don't know what it's like to carry a baby for nine months um, and deal with all that on top of all this. So there just has to be, if you keep that thought, that what each of you do is equally important and don't play that what I do is more important than you card, then that issue is not going to um, become significant for you. Dr. Chief, so much wisdom here. I, I want to know your thoughts on this because I, I've seen this with my own clients. So I work with a lot of physicians who want to start their own business. They want to invest in real estate, their new venture. And you know, they, they, they talk to me about what to do. And then I, you know, invariably ask him, Oh, okay. So what does your spouse think of all this? And they'll say, you know what? She, did, she doesn't think what I'm doing is, is right, but you know, I, I'm, I'm good with that. So I'll just keep this money. I'll hide that this money from her and, and uh, you know, she'll get the benefits from that later. I probably know what you're going to say to that. Cause I see your face here. Um, What's your opinion on this? Oh, oh do it on your own. Dr. Mike, oh, that's uh, that is in a in a sense, well, not in a sense, it's a cheating. What basically what that is, that's called financial infidelity, is what that is. Um, and in finances are a, whether it's an investment, whether it's how much each of you agree to spend in a particular week. Um, you need to make time to talk about what's going on. Um, if one of you is doing the majority of the work with the bill paying and knows what's coming in um, and you do that, it's great that you're taking that responsibility to do that, but it does not give you the right because you're doing it to take certain liberties and um, you know, do, doing things that just um, are not fair. Um, you decide you're going to do that, that's fine. So what I tell couples to do is that every two weeks, certainly not um, less frequently than every month, you sit down, you go, you go over where you are financially in a given month. You go over what, um, and this is basically marriage finance 101, um, but it applies to ourselves and our colleagues too. This is where this is what we're we're doing. 
um, as far as our bills, uh, this is what to do this month. This is what to do next month. The kids have this, the kids have that. We get all that paid. This is what we have um, for extra money. What do we want to do with that money? Um, then you can say, well, I have an idea about a, uh, an investment that I would like to make. Whether it's, a, like you said, real estate, you want to buy a building, or if you want to in, enlarge your, where your office is and you want to go into a bigger space, or that's all stuff that at least needs to be talked about. Um, and when you don't talk about that, and unfortunately, I bring up my, you know, my dad is a, as a, an example. He kept my mom in the financial dark for their, for their entire marriage. And um, huge mistakes that were made um, that caused um, a lot of regret with her. Um, she wasn't able to be... Um, is financially capable as she deserved to be. So I learned from that. And in some other cases with some other um, couples who we coached that that is a, uh, a boulder that's rolling downhill that's gathering a huge amount of moss that if it's ever discovered that you had cheated financially like that, sometimes it's really difficult to get that trust back. And sometimes it can be relationship ending if you continue with that kind of scene. Wow. So that, that was, that was really good. I mean, I've never heard the term financial infidelity, but I, I think it really hits home. Dr. G so much great information that you can share. How can somebody get a hold of you? How do you, how do you work with, with doctors or, or, or other couples? What's the best place to go to? Well, our, our website is, um, uh, com is one and the one I gave you also uh, www.bestfriendsagain.com we have a program that um, we put uh, physician couples uh, through it's, it's called uh, 90 days from clarity to connection and you go through that program and it um, things that you never knew about yourself tools that you never um, had thought about. We go through those things with you. We know what the, um, what the sunshine is and where the storms are and how to weather both um, with this program. So, um, so that is something that we're, it's the main thing that we're, um, that we're doing. Uh, we've had a lot of favorable feedback helped a lot of people want to help so many more. And that's, this is what I do with my, with my time completely right now. We are dedicated to this and we want physicians and their spouses to realize the kind of marriage that they never thought that they were ever going to be able to have, um, to have that and to get over issues that, that at one time they thought might be insurmountable. But the biggest thing, and that's why we call our business Best Friends Again, LLC, is you have to be each other's best friend. You have to. Well, I love it. Again, thank you for the information. We'll leave the links here on the show notes. Any last minute thoughts before we end our call today? Um, in this um, pretty um, isolated um, time where there's just not a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, SHK, uh, superhuman or simple human kindness. Our marriages light the way, not only for our patients, for our kids, but for society as a whole. Oh, powerful stuff. Thank you, Dr. Jeep. Again, his site is bestfriendsagain.com. Also, you can reach him at uh, Jeep and Finessa. Dr. Jeep and Vanessa. Dr. Jeep and Vanessa.com. Go out. If this sounds like something that you need in, in your life, you know, just don't think about it or research it. Dr. Jeep is out there to help you and Vanessa help you out on what is probably the most important thing that you can do before starting a business is make sure that you've got a strong foundation and it starts with your marriage. Thanks again, Dr. Jeep. And as always, keep moving forward. My pleasure.
My pleasure, Dr. Mike. Thank you so much. Hey, Dr. Mike here. I hope you're inspired by that interview. And if you aspire to become a coach or consultant yourself, I highly encourage you to check out my free on-demand masterclass, How to Become a Highly Paid In-Demand Physician Consultant or Coach. On the masterclass, I'll not only show you my story, how I've become a physician consultant for over 15 years, I'll also show you real life case studies of physicians who are actively doing this now, either adding or replacing their current income as a doctor. To register for the masterclass, we'll leave a link in the show notes. I look forward to sharing you this important information today.